Good morning and welcome to At Home with APS. I'm Dr. Karen Webb, Senior Director of Secondary Learning. First, I want to give a shout out to Principal Michelle Mansfield of Chamisa Elementary School. She wants to send her regards to all her students, families, and parents. She is, today she is reading The Giving Tree with her pets, Harley and Gus. We hope you enjoy your lessons, the different lessons that we've brought, put together for you. Please check out APS YouTube if you happen to miss any of our lessons. Thank you, we hope you enjoy the lessons today. Hi, I'm Mrs. B, and today we're gonna to talk about the number of the day. Our number of the day today is the number 12. Say it with me, 12. Let's count up to the number 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm going to write the number twelve on the board. I'm going to write it on this board and on this board. Notice that the number 12 has two digits or two numbers. It has the number one followed by the number two. That means that it has a ones place and a tens place. So here I have some boxes. So we have 10, one group of 10, and then we have two ones. And we're gonna look into this a little bit more. So let's draw a giant number 12 in the air. Ready? I'll do it first. Okay, ready? Stand up and let's write a giant number 12 together in the air. Ready? A one and a two. Great. Let's write the number 12 in tally marks. So remember, tally marks are straight lines, but when we get to the number five, we're going to draw a diagonal line. So join me. One, two, three, four, five. That's a group of five. Let's count on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten here, one group of ten. Let's count on. Ten, eleven, twelve. Next, can you write the number twelve? Can you spell it? Let's spell it together. T W E L V E. That's a hard one. It has a W and a V. Let's spell it together. Ready? Say it after me. T W E L V E. 12. Great. Next, let's see if the number 12 is even or odd. So I made some 10 cards here, 10 frames. I used an envelope, but you can use any piece of paper. And I have 10 boxes on here. Then I got some stickers, or you can draw shapes, or whatever it is you want to put in each of these boxes 
to represent a number. So let's count what we have here. I'm going to use this one first. Notice it's completely full. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So when a number is even, that means all of my stickers here have a pair or a partner. Think of it like a partner. So notice all of the stickers here had a partner. There wasn't one that was left by itself. So when we have all of our stickers paired up like this or partnered up, that means it's an even number. So the number 12 is an even number. E, V, E, N, even. Next, let's see what comes before 12 and after 12. Okay, I have to count to remember. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 11. 11 comes before 12. Okay, what comes after 12? I'm going to start from 11. 11, 12, what comes after 12? 13. Let's write a list down. 11, Comma is that little symbol there. 12. 13. Okay, let's review what we have so far. So our number of the day is number 12. And here's how we can write it in tally marks. Remember, tally marks are straight lines up to four. One, two, three, four. And then we write a diagonal line for the number five. And every time we have a group of five, we're going to use a diagonal line. So let me start over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's spell 12 again. Ready? T W E L V E. Good. Now, if we want to know if our number is even or odd, if everything we have, all the 12 things we have, each get a pair or a partner, then that means it's even. And all of my stickers here were paired up or partnered up, so that means the number 12 is even. And then we made a list. What came before and what came after 12? So we found that number 11 comes before 12 and 13 comes after 12. Next, let's do some math family facts. So I'm going to pick number 5, and I'm going to pick number 7. Okay, these are my two numbers that are going to go along. Let me find my number 12 here. Here's my number 12. Let me see. 10, 11. Here's 12. Let's review our math symbols for addition and subtraction. So remember, 
looks kind of like a small cross or a small T. This means plus, add, we can even say and. And this is for addition. Then we have our minus sign for subtraction, for takeaway. And then we have our equal sign. We can even say is. Okay, ready? So, I'm going to start with my number five, and I'm going to add seven to it. So five plus seven equals, I'm going to use my, my cards here with, with dots on them to help me out. So five plus seven. So instead of the numbers, now I have some cards with dots. I'm going to add five dots to seven dots. So let me count. And I'm going to start from five. And then I'm going to add on to my next card. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Let me write that on the board. Five dots plus or and seven dots equals 12. So these two numbers are parts of the number 12. What if I change that? What if I want to start this time with seven plus five? What would we get? I'm going to switch out my numbers for my dots. Seven plus five. So I'm going to count my dots and add on. So seven seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let me write that on the board. Seven dots plus. Five dots equals 12. Now we're going to subtract. So when we subtract, we need to start with our whole. So this time I'm going to start with the number 12. And I'm going to subtract or take away five. So I'm going to use my 10 frames here. So I have 12 here, and I want to take away 5. So I'm going to cover them up with another piece of paper. So I'm going to cover up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ooh. How many do I have left? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when I have 12 stickers and I took away five stickers, I had seven stickers left. Let's switch out five for the number seven. So this time, I'm going to start with my number 12. And I'm going to subtract or take away seven. So 
Okay, let's see what we get. So I'm starting with 12 stickers. And I'm going to take away seven stickers. And I'm going to cover them up with the card again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's see if I can count this. So all of these other stickers were taken away. What do I have left? One, two, three, four, five. Let me write that on the board. When I have 12 stickers and I take away seven, I have five. Let's review our math facts. Say them with me. Five plus seven equals 12. Seven plus five equals 12. 12 take away 5 equals 7. 12 take away 7 equals 5. Great. Let's sort some things out now. And let's figure out if it's the number of the day or not. So our number of the day is the number 12. And if the card I show you is the number 12, then we put it on this side. If the card I show you is not the number 12, we're going to put it on this side, OK? Let's see. Do I have tape? Let me get some tape. Getting caught on the chair there. All right, so let's start with these two cards. What does this card say? Does it look familiar? It's the number 12. So we're going to put it on our 12 side. That's how we spell the number 12. Do you know what this says? Two. Can you show me with your fingers the number two? Two. One, two. Is the number two the number 12? No, it's not. So we're going to put it on the side. That's not our number of the day. We have some tally marks here. Count them with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is ten the number twelve? No, it's not. So we're going to put it on our side. That's not the number 12. Here's another set of tally marks. Count these with me. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do these tally marks show the number twelve? Yes, twelve tally marks. So that goes on our twelve side. And that looks just like that. Okay. Let's see, this one's a little tricky. 
5 plus 2. Let's see, can we count from 5 and add 2 more? I'm going to use my hands for this. 5, 6, 7. 5 plus 2 is 7. Is 7 the number 12? No, it's not. Does this look familiar? 5 plus 7. That was one of our math facts today. 5 plus 7 equals 12. So 5 plus 7 is 12. We're going to put that on our 12 side. OK. Before we count one last time, let's review. So our number of the day was the number 12. And it looks a little strange here because I wrote it in tens and ones. We had 12 tally marks. We spelled the number 12. Let's spell it one more time. T W E L V E. Good. Even. If you have 12 things at your house and you want to pair them all up, so there's groups of two, all of your things would all have a pair or a partner. That means the number 12 is even. We know 11 comes before 12 and 13 comes after 12. And let's review our family facts one more time. Math family facts. So I picked the number 5 and 7. And when I break up 12 into 5 stickers and 7 stickers and I add them all together, 5 plus 7, I will get 12 stickers. Or if I take my stickers, my 12 stickers, and I make a group of 7 stickers, and I add on five stickers, I'll have 12 stickers. Or if I take all of my 12 stickers and I subtract or take away five stickers, I'm going to count I have seven stickers left. Or if I start with 12 stickers and I subtract or take away seven stickers and I count how many I have left, I'm going to have five stickers left. So before I go, let's count in Spanish this time. So let's count up to 12 in Spanish. Count with me. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, Diez, once, doce. Let's do that one more time in Spanish. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Once, doce. I hope you have a great day. Up next is Miss Kathy. See you next time. Hello, good morning, mathematicians. I'm so happy to see you back here again. My name is Miss Kathy, and today we're going to be working on a couple of math games. But before we begin, mathematicians, I have a collection of items that I'm going to ask you to examine, and I want you to guess, I want you to guess how many items are in here. And these are different shapes of pom-poms and different colors, um, all very sparkly and fun, and so there's a mix of them, which makes this a little bit trickier. And just like last time, I'm going to have you write down your guess for how many 
items are in this collection. So I already wrote down my guess, and I wrote down some guesses of some friends of mine. Um, but I'm going to have you take a moment and write it down on a scrap piece of paper. How many pom-poms do you think are in my collection? Hold it up one more time for you. OK. Do you have your number? Great. So I asked my friends Mrs. B and Mrs. Q, and I wrote down my own guess as well, for how many items they think are in this collection. And my friend Mrs. B wrote such 17. Um, my friend Mrs. Q said 37. And then my guess was 23. So I made a little chart to show my friends' guesses. This is something you could do at home, too, make a chart for guesses. And so now we got to find out who's the closest. Who had the number that was the closest to the actual collection? Who was way off? Um, so we got to count them to find out. Last time we counted by fives at the very beginning. This time I want us to count by twos to find out how many items are in this collection. So when I have two together, I'm going to say two. And I want you to repeat back wherever you are um, so that you can practice counting by twos as well, friends. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, ooh, 34, 36, 38, 40, wow, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, wow, 52, 54, 56, 58, 60, 62, and one left over. So 62, and we're going to count on one, 63. Wow, friends, there were way more pom-poms in here than I ever expected. So all of us were very, very off. Um, who was the closest? Who, which of us, Mrs. B, Mrs. Q, or Miss Kathy, which of us was the closest to the number? That's right, Mrs. Q, she had 37. How about you? Were you closer to the number than the teachers were today? Awesome. So we counted all of them by twos, and we got 63. I'm going to put them all back, and I want us to practice counting by fives. That was that number we were focused on last Friday. So all my pom pom poms can go back. And we know the answer is going to be 63, so that there will be three left over at the very end. I'm going to take those out right now. OK, friends. So once you have a collection of five, we're going to say, Five, and will you repeat that back at home? Five, what am I going to say next? <gasps> 10, 15, 20, 25. What's going to be next, friends? 30, 35. 40, 45, 50, they kind of stick together, 55, and 60, and we have our three left over, so 61, 62, 63. And so there's two ways to count our collection today, by twos and by fives, and you can also make a chart for your guests and anyone else's guests who might watch with you. So this game, Count the Collection, is a game you can play wherever you are. If you have a bunch of items, you put them in a bowl or in a bag, and you ask somebody, how many items do you think are in here? Have them make a guess, write it down, write down your guess, write down the guess, guess of a sibling or grown-up, and see who can get the closest. All right, friends. So 
Last week, we were looking at different numbers when we were making our games. With me, you made a game of memory using tally marks and numerals. We had two different representations of a number in order to play this game, the numeral and tally marks, just like you use different representations for number of the day with Mrs. B. We also made a game of go fish using number names. So we have seen so far three different representations when we're making math games. We've seen number names, tally marks, and numerals. Today we're going to be making a math game with a brand new representation for numbers. And we're going to be using a 10 frame to show numbers. So if you look over here, I have two 10 frames. And I just made these by hand. They're not perfect. They don't have to be to do the job. But what we're going to do is learn how to play a game and then we're going to learn how to build a game that you can play using a representation of a 10 frame. Now, math games are fabulous. They make us strong learners while we're playing. That's the best way to learn while you're having fun. So as we play this game today, I want you to think, hmm, how could I make this work if I don't have the materials that Ms. Kathy has? And there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I'm going to show you some of them. So in order to play this game, I needed a 10 frame. So I made two 10 frames on a poster board. And I'm going to play with you at home. So I have me, I'm going to be the top 10 frame. And then I'm going to make my friends at home. You guys are going to be the bottom 10 frame. And I'll roll the dice for you so we can play it across the TV. But we're going to see who wins. So here's me and here's you, friend. And what we need next is a single dice, well, a die. If there's more than one die, it's called dice. Um, and I have a couple of them right here. I only need one. And two friends would take turns rolling this die. If you do not have a die at home, you can actually make one out of paper. Did you know that? In order to make one out of paper, you're going to need something square that you can trace. And ooh, I forgot my square item. I'm going to do my best by freehand. But in order to do this by, by making a dice that you could use at home, you're going to need, may, need to make squares on a piece of paper. And I really recommend having something to trace. I'm going to do the best I can for you, friends. And then when you look at a single die, you'll see that there's one, two, three, four sides looking just around on that one axis. So I'm going to make four squares. Oh, and I had heard this pro tip from another friend who's a teacher. She says that sometimes you can print, like on the internet you say dice template, you can actually print um, something you can cut out from the like, printer. I heard somebody say that. I think that's pretty cool. So I have my four going across, and then I put one on top, one square, and I'm going to put one square on the bottom. All right, friends. And then you would use scissors. And remember, over here we always say make sure you have permission from an adult, a grown-up, before you use scissors. You just want to be safe. And then you would cut it out all the way around. And then you fold it. And it's kind of like magic. It's amazing what you can make out of folded paper. Like origami. I don't know if you've ever tried that. It's pretty cool. And so I'm just cutting it out, friends. And mine's not going to be perfect, and that's OK. Yours doesn't have to be perfect either. So if you ever you're missing something, and you're like, oh, I can't play that game. I don't have this. I want you to think. Think like a problem solver. How could you make something that could make your game work? Um, another way you could play this game is not with a die at all, but with a random number generator that you can find um, on the internet. So that's pretty cool. So now I have my six pieces, um, my six squares, and looks kind of kind of like a T, the letter T. I'm now going to fold down on the lines of all of those squares. Just fold them so that each of those little lines has a little crease. 
And now when you fold this up with a little bit of tape magic, we actually have something we could roll as a dice. We've made a cube, friends. I would just add a little bit of tape and add numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six to it. So that's one way you could make a die if you needed one at home, just from a piece of paper. And it could be a piece of paper that you reuse that used to be something else too. Um, I get really excited when I can reuse something that was once something else. Um, okay, so now I have my die and you're gonna play with me at home. I'm the top 10 frame and you're the bottom 10 frame. And I created these little pieces of paper to show um, when we get points. And so you guys, I'm gonna make you guys blue. Blue's a fabulous color. I'm gonna give you my favorite color and I'll be yellow. Um, when I roll the dice, I'm going to look to see what number of dots is on the dice. I'm going to then take that number and I'm going to add the number of pieces of paper for it on my 10 frame. My goal is to get to 10. Okay, friends, so I'm gonna roll the dice first for me and then for you. I got the number two. So I'm going to use two pieces of paper and I'm going to stick them up there on my 10 frame to show that I got two on my first roll. Um, when you're doing your 10 frame, you wanna start on the left. One, two. And our goal is going to be to fill the top row and then the bottom row. Okay, friends, I lost my chair. Let's see what number you get. Five, wow, you're so lucky. One. Two. Three. Four. and five. So now it's my turn again, and I'm trying to fill my 10 frame. So if I could roll a number that would help me fill up this row, I'd be really excited. I rolled a six, friends. Wow, that's a lot. So, so far I have two. If I add six more, what will I have all together? Hmm, two plus six. What number will that be? I could start at six and count on two more. Six, seven, eight. Which means how many left do I, how many more do I need in order to win the game? Hmm. So in this 10 frame game, you can use lots of different things to make your 10 frame, which I'm gonna show you here. A 10 frame, you just have to make sure that it has 10 even, mostly even, boxes. And you'll need something to fill it in. So I have, let's see, five on top, five, six, seven, eight. So six plus two was eight, and I need two more. Let's see what you get. <gasps> Friends, you got six. Wow, I wonder if that's gonna be enough to fill your 10 frame. Six more. So I used this poster board because I had it and I wanted it to be nice and big to play with. Um, but what's something else you could use to make a 10 frame on? Well, you could use a piece of paper. You could use an envelope like Mrs. B uses for her 10 frames. When Mrs. B makes her 10 frames, she takes a simple envelope and draws lines on it to make her 10 frames. You could do that. So six, wow, guys. So we've done one, two, three, four, five. But wait a second. I've only done five, and your 10 frame is already full. That means you had more than enough to win. Fantastic, congratulations friend, I'm so happy you won. And whenever you're playing this game with a friend, make sure you tell them, I'm so happy you won with they win. It makes you both feel really good when you're able to share that. So, when you build this game at home, 
Make sure you have a nice big 10 frame that you can put something in, and then make sure your items that you're counting with will fit inside. I used some cut up pieces of paper that were extra, and then I also, if I were to play on this envelope, would use smaller pieces from anything. It could be like Legos, um, little pieces from a game that you have around. Okay, friends, so this is our 10 frame game. All we needed to play it was a dice, a single die, we also needed a way to make our 10 frame and some items to play. I hope you have fun playing it today with your family. Bye, friends. Good morning, and welcome back to At Home with APS. To finish us off today, I'm going to read a story called, What Do You Do With a Tail Like This? It is written by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. Animals use their ears, nose, tails, eyes, mouths, and feet in very different ways. See if you can guess which animal each part belongs to and how it's used. At the back of the book, we'll find out more about these animals. What do you do with a nose like this? Let's make some predictions and see what these animals might be. I see a big long nose with sharp teeth. What animal do you think that might be? I see a very long nose. I wonder what animal that might be. I see a very flat nose. I don't think I've ever seen a nose like that before. And this nose over here doesn't even look like a nose. The last nose over here also has some whiskers. What would you do with a nose like this? If you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. I did not make that guess. If you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. I guessed that it was maybe a dog, not a hyena. If you're an elephant, you might use your nose to give yourself a bath. I did guess that one. If you are a mole, you use your nose to find a way to dig underground. I've never seen a mole's nose before. Very different. If you're an alligator, you breathe through your nose while hiding underwater. I thought that's what those sharp teeth belonged to, an alligator. Were your predictions correct? we have another challenge for you. What do you do with ears like these? All the different kinds of ears. This one doesn't look like an ear at all. I wonder what that one might be. And this is so big, but I don't see an ear that I typically think of an ear. Let's find out. Did you make some guesses at home? Do you know what some of these animals are or what they would do with these ears? If you're a jackrabbit, you use your ears to keep cool. I did guess that one correct, did you? If you're a bat, you see with your ears. I never knew that about bats. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you go underwater. If you're a cricket, you hear with ears that are on your knees. Touch your knees on your legs. Can you hear with your knees? Wow a tiny little cricket able to hear with their knees. If you're a humpback whale, you hear sounds hundreds of miles away. 
and I didn't even see their ears, so they must be very tiny on that giant humpback whale. Interesting. What do you do with a tail like this? I can see some different looking tails here. I think I can guess what this one is. Do you know what that one might be? Let's see if our guesses are correct. If you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. This giraffe is very tall. I wonder if his tail could reach up high. Ah, I was correct. It was a skunk. If you're a skunk, you use your tail to warn that a stinky spray is on the way. Oh, I'm very glad that I don't have any skunks around. Here is a very long tail. If you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. Did you know that about lizards? That their tails can break away? If you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. I try to stay away from scorpions. And if you're a monkey, you can hang from the tree with your tail. I think I would enjoy that. How about you? Do you wish you had a tail? Maybe not a stinky tail. How fun would it be to have a tail? What do you do with eyes like these? All the different eyes. It is interesting that all of the animals on this page have two eyes. We're only seeing one side of their head. I wonder what their eyes do that's different than ours. If you're an eagle, you spot tiny animals from high up in the air. Eagles do need very good eyesight to see tiny little animals that they can swoop down. If you're a chameleon, you can look two ways at once. They can see this direction and this direction at the same time. My eyes don't do that. If you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below the water at the same time. That's very interesting to me because it looks like they only have two eyes, but they have two on top and two on bottom. So that gives them four eyes. Very interesting. What a lucky fish. If you're a horned lizard, oh my goodness, you can squirt blood out of your eyes for protection. Oh wow, that is an interesting fact about that lizard. And if you're a bushy baby, you use your large eyes to see at night. Here's the bush baby. And it does have very big eyes. Can you see well at night? like the bush baby can. What do you do with feet like these? I wonder what animals these feet belong to. Did you notice this foot right here? I thought it was a stick, but I believe it's a foot. I don't see any human feet. If you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. That's very handy. You could eat lots of things if you had all four working together. If you're a blue-footed boo-boo, you can dance with your feet. Look at that, looks like a duck. He can do a dance. I think I could do that with my feet too. Can you do that with your feet at home? Here's the one that I didn't recognize. 
If you're a water strider, you can walk on water with your feet. How interesting that these little feet that look like sticks would be able to walk on water. Did you make that prediction? I didn't. If you're a gecko, you can use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. That would be a new perspective for sure. And if you're a mountain goat, you can leap from ledge to ledge of rocks using those feet. I think that's why they looked hard in this previous page. Those feet looked really hard. And that's why, because they were using them to jump from rocks. All of these different animals with such different, such different feet. What do you do with a mouth like this? I can guess some of them, but I'm not sure of others. What are your predictions? If you're a pelican, you can use your mouth as a net to scoop up fish. If you're a mosquito, you can use your mouth to suck up blood. I do not like mosquitoes. If you're an egg-eating snake, you use your mouth to swallow eggs that are bigger than your head. If you're an anteater, you can capture termites with your long tongue. And if you're an archer fish, you can catch insects by shooting them down with water. I never knew that about archer fish. Pretty neat. On the back page of this book are tons of different facts about all of the animals that we learned about today. The noses and the ears, the tails, the eyes, the feet, and the mouths. I like learning about different animals that are all around me and making predictions about what they can do with their tail, their mouth, and their feet. See if you have stuffed animals at your house or if you can see other animals on TV or in books at your house and make some predictions about what they can do with their feet or tails or mouths. And then see which other animals you would like to learn about. Today for our math lesson, we started by learning about the number 12. You can see back here. We practiced counting, skip counting to 12 and writing the word 12. With Miss Kathy, we learned a 10 frames game that you can play at home by yourself or with someone that's at your house with you. All you need is a 10 frame and some dice. You can even make everything that you need for that game all by yourself. That would be fun to play with a friend or with a sibling if you have somebody at home. And then we read the book, What Can You Do With a Tale Like This? All of the animals in this book were different and unique. Maybe while you're at home, you want to find out some other things about animals and spend some time doing some research or thinking about how animals um, can do different things with their, with their feet their hands, their tails, even their mouth. As you're working at home, see which of these ideas you want to play again with friends at home or with your family, or come up with new games that you can play all by yourself. See how many numbers in 12 you can find to play or add with. Maybe you can make a 12 um, game with 10 frames and see what you can do together. Using rocks that you find outside is an easy way that you can continue to play games. Hopefully, you can count and learn and find somebody to play with at home. We want to thank you for being with us today at home with APS as we learned some math games. And we hope to see you back tomorrow as we can read some more books together and do some more learning. Thank you for joining us and see you again next time.